Our objective here is to try to identify just what the performance limits are for each. The question is, what is the difference in the principles of design? What are the performance limits for each of those two pipes? Recognized as a leading test facility in North America for pipe and water research, Utah State University was selected to perform specific tests on rigid and flexible pipe. The objective was to observe the structural performance and performance limits of rigid and flexible pipe when buried under very high soil cover. As an international authority on soil structure interaction mechanics, Dr. Reynold Watkins is an instructor at the Piping System Institute at Utah State University. Dr. Owen K. Shoup is a professor of mechanical engineering and a member of USU's Buried Structures Research Team. Under the direction of Dr. Watkins and Dr. Shoup, tests were conducted in a six foot by six foot test cell with four loading beams and 16 hydraulic cylinders. A compacted bedding was prepared test pipe was laid in place with the balance of the soil compacted in layers to a height of approximately 20 inches above the pipe. Vertical soil loads up to 100 feet were then simulated. Test 1 and 2 were performed using fine sand with 20% silt to simulate marginal backfill soil conditions. Both tests followed identical procedures Soil was placed in 8-inch lifts and compacted to an average density of 84%. This would represent, at best, marginal installation. A level bedding was prepared. The Class III reinforced concrete pipe was then set in place. Soil was shovel sliced under the haunches and compacted. Soil moisture and soil densities were measured and recorded. After the final layer of soil was compacted and tested, the steel plate was set in place to uniformly distribute vertical load. The four sets of loading beams and hydraulic cylinders were locked in place. As the vertical soil pressure increased, the performance of the concrete pipe was measured and observed for signs of distress. When the vertical soil pressure reached approximately 24 feet of soil cover, the concrete pipe developed a 1 one hundredth of an inch crack at 12 and 6 o'clock. Okay, the vertical now is 17.9015. The yellow arrow highlights the crack. Cement's starting to chip away a little bit. The sand's starting to fall through a little. 600 PSI. Okay, the cement's starting to chip away. 900. Loud cracking. This is starting to fall apart. 1,000 PSI. Oh, now we're getting big chunks of cement falling. There's 1,200. 1,300. 1,400. 1,600. 1,600. 1,700. There's 1,800 PSI. The pipe did not collapse, but would leak. After the completion of test one, the soil was carefully removed and the pipe inspected. Identical test procedures were used in test two. An 18 inch ultra rib PVC pipe was installed. With the pipe now in place, we're in the process of compacting soil on the sides, in lifts, in the same way that we did with the rigid pipe. 
We will continue to fill it and then load it and then note what sort of performance that we get from it when the equivalent soil height is raised to maybe 100 feet. When the vertical soil pressure reached approximately 24 feet of soil cover. Okay, John, we're reading the vertical and we're reading 16.063. The ring deflection was measured at 8.7%. As the load increased, so did the deflection of the ultra-rib PVC pipe. 500, now at 600 PSI, 900 PSI, now at 1,000 PSI, 1,200 PSI, 1,300 PSI, 1,400 PSI. However, at no time did the ultra rib show signs of structural distress. At 100 feet of cover, deflection was 31 percent. Again, the soil was carefully removed and the pipe scrutinized. Rebounding to about 95 percent of its original shape, the ultra rib pipe showed no visible signs of distress. As the ultra rib was lifted from the cell, there was an obvious pipe imprint in the soil indicating that the bedding material had properly located between the ribs in the haunching zone. In test three, ultra rib was installed in three quarter inch stone to simulate good backfill conditions. The same procedures were followed as in tests one and two. A level bedding was prepared and compacted to about 90% density by a vibroplate in 18 inch lifts. As the vertical soil pressure was increased, the vertical ring deflection was measured. We're reading the vertical. 17 17.518. 17.379. 17.262. 17.128. A fourth test was conducted to measure the effects of incorporating a T-fitting and one foot of broken ribs on the ultra rib pipe. Buried in three quarter inch crushed stone, the same procedures were again followed as in test three. These tests were conducted under the direction and supervision of the Buried Structures Laboratory at Utah State University. The contribution made by Dr. Reynold Watkins and Dr. Owen K. Shoup will assist pipeline design engineers to understand the performance limits of rigid and flexible pipe, as well as the conditions under which they can each perform successfully. In test one, at 24 feet of cover, the rigid pipe developed a one hundredth of an inch crack. As the soil cover increased, ultimately reaching 100 feet, wide cracks develop in the concrete pipe at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. The result was a severely deformed pipe. In test two at 24 feet of soil cover in marginal backfill, the flexible pipe ring deflection was measured at 8.7%. At 100 feet, vertical ring deflection measured 31%. In test three, Ultra rib ring deflection at 30 feet of cover with good backfill was approximately one half of 1%. At 100 feet, ring deflection was 2.7%. In test four, ring deflection at 30 feet was approximately one half of 1% in good backfill. At 100 feet, ring deflection was measured at under 2.9%. Conclusion. Tests one and two show how rigid and flexible pipes behave differently under identical soil conditions and loads. Rigid pipe is designed to resist soil pressure, therefore its performance is measured by its ability to withstand longitudinal cracking. 